What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it of course is all about classic bodybuilding. And today, as you can see, we are at the gym. It's a rest day today and when I woke up this morning I was very happy because finally my weight broke the 124 kilo mark. So if you watched the previous video, I included some bicycle cardio into my routine and right when I did that, I went to 123.8 kilos, which makes me very happy, less insecure to gain or to reach my body weight for the uh, RL Classic UK. So I also went on my bicycle to the gym today and now it's time to train the abs. So yes, it's a rest day, but we're still at the gym because abs need to be trained and honestly, I don't really like training abs, but usually in bodybuilding, you have to do the things that you don't like to actually achieve the results above and beyond what you would normally have achieved. So let's get started. And I want to work on the rectus abdominis, which is the visible six pack abs. They need to become thicker and they've already become thicker, but they still need to be thicker even beyond that. And that's this exercise very good for. Okay guys, as many reps as possible. Uh, in my opinion, 15 reps should be the minimum for abs. Otherwise, you will simply use other muscle groups just like with regular training. If you go too heavy, other muscles will be involved like the obliques and that's not what I want to grow. Let's go. That's enough for the regular crunch. And the reason why you can make this, well, why I make this a lot more difficult than it could be is I truly focus on those six pack abs and not the entire abdominal area to do the movement because otherwise everything will grow and I just want the six pack to become thicker. And that is what bodybuilding is all about. Isolating muscles to make them appear more in proportion, more aesthetically for your own physique. All right, now we're going to do some easy crunches and well, I actually call them easy. A lot of people cheat on this quite a lot, but all you actually, all I want to do here is use the rectus abdominis contraction to perform this exercise. So I'm going to go up as high as I can, but the only reason and the only possibility for me to go even higher would be to use other muscles which I don't want. So I'm going through a very short range of motion, but it causes a lot of blood to be uh, pulled up in the abs, which is what I want. I already did the heavy lifting just now, and now it's more about abdominal control because you will be able to see that if I do it wrong, the middle ridge of the abdominals, you wanna keep that very deep. If it comes out, that means you don't have control over your transverse abdominus, AKA the muscle responsible for a stomach vacuum. Now that we finished off the rectus abdominis, because I can literally feel if I force it, other muscles will be involved. So let's not do that. But we are now going to train the transverse abdominis. 
the muscle responsible for pulling in the stomach with stomach vacuum. So that's actually very easy. So the first variation that you can do is just to actually just sit regularly like this and first breathe in to get oxygen into your muscles and then breathe out to pull in your stomach and just sit like that for like 10 to 15 seconds and repeat a couple of times and then if you've done this for the first time the next day you will have a lot of muscle ache not in the abdominals but actually in the rectus abdominis the layer below it and that is very special to feel because then you can actually feel you trained a muscle that you can't really see which is uh, unique and then catch your breath a couple of times so the most difficult part about this is not the contraction of the muscle it is actually the amount of oxygen required to, to hold your breath and at the same time keep your body functioning when you're uh, you know, close to 100, 124 kilos. That's the most difficult part. So that's where practice comes in and you gotta do it a couple of times. But I like to do it a little more complicated, at least a little more resistance added. So now, if you do it like this, you have the resistance of the gravity. So gravity is now pulling your stomach towards the ground and you gotta pull it up. So that's just a little extra resistance that you can use. So let's do it. That's what you want to repeat a couple of times and near the end of the prep this is what I'll do, be doing every single day because you got to prioritize these kinds of things when you get more and more fatigued you got to get used to this more and more so that on stage it's becoming easier because trust me guys if you do a front double bicep with a vacuum and they're simply not going to the next pose you got to stand like this for a longer time than you expect you want to have practiced this pose because otherwise it's gonna show on stage. Okay guys, it is now time to go home. And the big benefit is we can go to the gym, train the abs, because we live quite close by and that's why I like to take my bicycle with me. And as you guys know, my coach has told me to do a little more cardio and that's exactly what we're doing so in addition to the walks that i do in the morning and in the evening i also go on the bicycle to the gym and to my house again i'll see you back at home We are going to do something not many people do. It's a once, usually once in a lifetime, maybe twice in a lifetime you do this. So it's very rare, especially for a bodybuilder and a gym owner to be doing this. But let me show you what it is. So we actually got a casting kit from Baby Art. Now, what could that be? This is all material normally used to create casts like when you break a leg or an arm. They put a cast around you, especially a very old school way, and it hardens and then your arm or leg is protected and kept in that position. But we are actually going to create a cast of the pregnant belly. We already did one for Dexter around 38 weeks. And now we are around the same time of pregnancy. So now we're going to create one for his little sister as well. You may have already seen it at the gym. It's at the gym uh, at the wall in the office. Took some pictures and I was at the uh, Olympia preparation. So that one turned out really well. And now we want to do one before it's too late for his little sister. 
Maar nu moet ik het even mijn BH uitdoen. <laughs> dus. We can't film the next part. One hour later. And this is the end result. So this is the casted pregnant belly. And you can see it's already easily coming off. We're gonna wait about 15 minutes and then it's gonna come off. And then we need to let it harden for three days and then you can make some nice decorations. We just got back from the gym training the abs and I told you guys that you don't want to train the abs where the middle part actually sticks out because when that happens you will create a wider waist instability in the abdominals but guess who that always happens to? To someone who has been pregnant, who is pregnant and especially after pregnancy then what right now happens is the abdominals are being stretched apart. So pretty much the abs are like here and here because to make room for the baby, the abs need to split apart. And now here, there is pretty much an opening. As you can see by the belly button, it comes out because it can't be sucked in anymore, obviously. So a little, little daughter is in here. And this is the proof that bodybuilders sometimes also look exactly like this. When they uh, relax your stomach, when they eat a lot of food in the off season. When you're pregnant, it's only for nine months, but when you're a bodybuilder, it can be year after year after year, and then the ads will be stretched apart because of the bloating all the time, and that's what then happens. So this is the ultimate example of something like, how do you call it? Diet? Diastasis recti is the um, official name and when that happens it only happens usually to pregnant women but also to bodybuilders who are bloated all the time, who eat a lot of food, who don't train abs. When they brace for the squat their stomach comes forward it becomes as big as this pregnant belly for a while but you may think it won't hurt your look but in the end after years you will have distended stomach, abs split apart, and that's not what you want. Yeah guys, so that's what's going on behind the scenes, and um, I think we're gonna show a little bit more about how it's really gonna go when she's born, how we will deal with the extra pressure, because with Dexter we already experienced it, but now with another baby it's gonna be a whole different world and we live in a new house now, so no more apartment, but it's still going to be a question. Less sleep. Yes, uh, a lot less sleep. Um, if you guys know, I actually torn, partially torn my hamstring. Luckily, it's not visible at all, but I partially torn it when Dexter was born because of too little sleep and I still wanted to beat my logbook. Those things can happen and I learned from it and uh, we both know a lot better how to deal with situations like that, but um, we'll see. And I'm gonna try to show you as much as possible of that process because it's the best thing that can possibly happen in your life, but at the same time, also one of the most difficult things. So yes, an interesting time ahead. Okay guys, uh, and now we're going to create some beautiful cream of rice. A lot of people have been asking me where do you get your cream of rice from? How do you make your cream of rice? because a lot of people in the Netherlands or even Europe, cream of rice, like the, the one, the orange package from the USA, isn't available here. And if it is, it's costing like four, five, six euros for a package of like 300 grams. So that is quite expensive. But I'm here to tell you, you can make your own cream of rice, a lot of different versions for the cheapest possible price imaginable. Why? because all bodybuilders that are watching this video have regular rice at home, so do I. So let me show you. I have some rice stocked up, of course. I personally like this. This is, as you can see, parboiled rice. We have something called, at least in Dutch translated, a kitchen machine. As you can place a lot of things on here, 
And this, for example, is a small blender. The main difference between a regular blender and a kitchen machine is that this has a lot more wattage, a lot more power, which means the blade can spin a lot faster, which means it can crush and pretty much pulverize anything you put in here a lot more efficiently than a regular blender. So let me just create a cream of rice meal um, with the macros I would eat right now. So that will be 60 grams of rice. I'm gonna put it in here. And you can do this, by the way, in a regular blender as well. There is a Ninja Bullet with a thousand watts. I've done it with that before, it works. Well, what you wanna do now is obviously attach this to the machine. A lot of noise is going to be caused by this, but at the same time, it's for a good cause. Let's see if it works. So I'm just pausing it for a little while. As you can see, the, gra the grains of rice are now little chunks. And the longer you do this, the more the rice will be pulverized. So let's just do this until the rice is pretty much down to a sand texture. So now we are getting very close to what it is supposed to be. As you can see in here, it has become a powder. You can do this for as long as you want. Um, you know, the finer the powder, really it only changes the texture of the meal, but this is already enough to create the cream of rice meal. So let's grab a bowl, just like that. You can see how finely ground up it is. And you don't have to do this every single time because if you have a larger blender, you can literally put in like 500 grams of rice at once, blend it up until it's a fine powder like this, and then you can use it a couple of times. So this does create a regular cream of rice meal, but the volume won't be that great. It will be, if you add like 300 mils of water, you have a very nice smooth meal, but we are going to hack this meal. This is one of my techniques that I like to use. So what is this? This is a powder. This is actually egg white powder. So literally dried egg white. So this is pure protein. And we're going to add this to here. And what that does is just um, think about liquid egg whites. What happens if you put them in the pan and heat them up? It starts to form a solid. And the same will happen here. When you cook the egg whites, it becomes a lot more voluminous. And the same will happen in this situation. The only thing you really wanna do is beforehand, you want to truly mix it up with the cream of rice as much as possible. So you do need good flavoring system to be added, starting with Himalayan pink salt, adding that to here, just like that. And another small hack, this is psyllium husk. Normally, at the end of prep, I would add 10 grams, but now we're only going to add like two grams. That's already enough to create a thicker consistency. So let's mix that up once more. It's very important, guys, to mix up the dry ingredients as much as possible before mixing everything up with the water, guys. It's very important. So now we have mixed everything up. The last ingredient before adding the water, a little bit of extra sweetener, just a little bit right here. And now we are going to add 450 mils of water. This is a cooker. It automatically cooks the water uh, right when you take it, right when you add it. Now we're gonna add it to this, just like that. It's not as smooth as normal, but when you're in prep, you just wanna create some volume. So you wanna mix this up as much as possible, just like that. And the longer you let the water interact with everything, the more solid it will become. So now you basically, you let this sit for a little while, then mix it up again so you don't have any water that is being separated from the cream of rice itself. So the only downfall 
when you compare cream of rice in the off season compared to the prep is that the consistency, the texture will be less and less ideal compared to the off season. But at the same time, you can keep the volume the same, but the amount of calories go down quite a lot, which is a big benefit. So normally I would make this in the morning and then I put this in either the fridge or the freezer for a little while because in the meantime, we are going to make the whey paste. That is an incredibly important addition. Why? Because if you don't, you won't have enough protein and you won't have the flavor experience without it. So let's add this. And this guys tastes incredible. This is gourmet chocolate and yes, a lot of brands put gourmet flavor on there and it doesn't taste gourmet at all. But this one, this one does. Why? Well, the flavor is not just amazing, but the texture is as smooth as you can imagine. Velvet gourmet chocolate is what you will experience. So now we just need a little bit of water. My rule around, well, 50 mil, 45 to 50 mil of water. Since we're using a little less whey, we're going for 40 mil right now. Add it to here, just like that. And then use one of Dexter's baby spoons to mix it all up. And you want to keep mixing until all the powder is gone. Even when you think, oh, it's a little too thick, just keep mixing it and you will end up with a thick chocolate paste, but the paste doesn't really sound as delicious. It's more like a, a true chocolate syrup or molten chocolate. Anything you want to name it that sounds as delicious as possible because that's what it deserves. As you can see here, this is incredibly delicious when you add it on top of the cream of rice. One rule, the cream of rice needs to be cooled down to at least room temperature. So I'm also going to put this in the fridge and you know, near the end, um, we're usually when I do cardio, for example, I come home and then everything is cooled down enough. But you've seen that meal quite a lot of times. The only difference is normally I put in some extra fruit in the morning, but that's not a plan because this will be one of my regular daily meals, so no food included. So yes, guys, that was the creation of your own cream of rice. And the incredible thing is it's not just cheap. You can use basmati rice, long grain rice, sushi rice, even risotto rice. You just mix it up, experiment with what works. And I'm going to show you guys this a lot more often because you also have brown rice, for example, with more fiber. You can choose a lot of different rices, guys. And since cooking is one of my passions, it's something I find very interesting. This is something I just tried out and it works. Why pay for a pulverized rice in the store that's 10 times as expensive when you can do it at home? You just need to have a strong enough blender. So try it out in the blender at home. If it doesn't work, well, you gotta need a stronger one. But this is just a small, you know, introduction to you being able to create your own cream of rice. And uh, if you have any questions for me, ask them down below. I will be doing live weekly Q and A's for sure on the channel. So be on the lookout for those. And don't forget to check out VintageGenetics.com for your old school apparel and clothing. And of course, guys, don't forget to stay golden.